Hello and welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at volume. This is going to include volume of prisms, cubes, cuboids and cylinders. So first of all, what is volume? So if you think area, it's how much space something takes up on the floor, like a rug. Volume is how much space there is in a three dimensional object. So it could be how much water there is in the, in the swimming pool, for example, or what's the volume of a Pringles tube? <laughs> something like that so it's how much space is that inside of a 3d shape so with cubes and cuboids they're quite straight straightforward what you want to be doing essentially with these is just multiplying the three sides you've got together so the three dimensions there so with if we think of area the formula for area is length times width so that's a two-dimensional shape we've got our two dimensions length and width with cuboids so the uh, 3D version of a rectangle, if you like, we've got three dimensions. So we've got the length and the width, but we've also got a height for our third dimension. And you just need to multiply those three together. One way I always like to describe working out the volume of shapes, and this applies to cubes, cuboids, prisms, and cylinders, is to work out the area of one of the ends and then just times it by how far back it goes. Because you'll find one of the ends is a 2D shape. So here we've got a rectangle at the end of a cylinder. So like the lid of a Pringles tube, for example, is a circle, prisms, Toblerone boxes, uh, the ends of those are triangles. So find out the area of the end and just times it by how far back it goes and you should be fine. So with this particular uh, cuboid we've got here, we, we work out the area of the face so 5.5 times 5 is 27.5 and then we just need to times it by how far back it goes giving us a volume of 275 centimeters cubed so with volume the unit of measure has a little three above it area has a little two that's an indicator of a 2d shape and a 3d shape basically so 2d is area 3d is volume okay so uh, if you want to have a pause of the video and see if you can answer this question so this has come from uh, an exam paper a man has a fish tank with the following dimensions so we can see 24 centimeters 29 and 41 so that's our length height and width he needs to know approximate volume of the tank what is the approximate volume so often you'll find out with with these types of questions it'll then have a follow-up from turning it from centimeters cubed into gallons or liters for example but we're not doing that on this one so the volume of this fish tank is 24 times 29 times 41 doesn't matter which order you do them in uh, it's all the same so 24 times 29 times 41 gives us 28,536 centimeters cubed so always remember the centimeters cubed bit um, but that's essentially all there is to it okay what about prisms so if we um, remember what i said about um, trying to work out the area of one of the faces so the ends here and then just times it by how far back it goes for this you need to know how to do the area of a triangle so if you've not watched the area uh, video that i've got then do give that one a watch but i shall briefly cover it here essentially area of a triangle is the same as you would do area of a rectangle you've got your two dimensions multiply them together the only difference is you're going to halve your answer so what you can do with this one is 8 times 10 divided by 2 gives you an area of 40 for that particular triangle and then we're going to times that by how far back it goes so 40 times 7 and that gives us a volume of 280 centimeters cubed and that's it so what we did there we worked out the area of the triangle which was that bit times it by how far back it goes and that gave us our answer another little practice question have a little go at this one the uh, angle there is irrelevant so you can ignore that but again this has come from an exam paper uh, so we've got a length a width and a height but essentially we want to work out the area there of the 
uh, triangle. So we're looking 12.88 times 0 0.9 equals 11.592. Divide that by 2 because it's a triangle. Gives us 5.796. So 12.88 times 0 0.9. Divide that by 2 gives you 5.796. 5.796. And we're going to times it by how far back it goes, which is a 0 0.8. So multiply that by 0 0.8 gives us 4.64. I'm going to round it to two decimal places. So 4.64. And again, this one is meters cubed so always remember your meters cubed or your centimeter cubed okay so moving on from there we've got the cylinders so if you think of pringles tubes how much space is there in a pringles tube i think it's always better when you relate these things back to food um so with this one we're going to use exactly the same method find out the area of one of the ends there and then times it by how far down it goes so uh, with this one, we're looking at the area of a circle. So if you're familiar with the area of a circle, you'll know it's pi r squared is the formula. So pi times r squared. So um, with this one, for volume, it's just got an h at the end for height. So it's pretty much the same as the area of the circle. We've just got the height. So for that third dimension there. So pi times r squared times h. So pi is normally given as 3.14 or 3.142. We'll use 3.14 on this occasion. Um, R stands for radius. So the radius is from the central point of the circle to the edge, so from the middle to the edge. The full width is the diameter. Sometimes it will give you a diameter, so you've got to halve it to get your radius. Um, so we've got a radius of six here. Now we can see it's squared, R squared. So if something is squared, you're multiplying it by itself. So here, six times six. You can work that out separately, or you can just put it in one big long calculation like we're doing here. And then the final bit is just multiply that by the height. So if you pop that into a calculator, it will give you the answer. So you can just do 3.14 times r squared, which is six times six, and then times 24. So that will give us a volume of 2712.96 centimeters cubed and that's it so you can put it all in one big long calculation like that this is a diagram of a box to be filled with chocolates the box is a cylinder the diameter of the box is 11 centimeters and the height is 22 calculate the volume of the box so as i mentioned earlier Sometimes they will give you a diameter, so you need to halve it to get the radius. So remember from what we've just been through, um, the formula is pi r squared h for the volume of a cylinder. So what you could do, just work out what half of 11 is. So divide that by 2, it's 5.5. So 11 divided by 2 equals 5.5. So we know the radius is worth 5.5. And now we can just put these numbers into our formula. So pi 3.14 times 5.5 times 5.5 for the r squared, and then times the h, which is 22, and that will give us our answer for the volume of this particular little box of chocolates. So 3.14 times 5.5 times 5.5 times 22 gives us an answer of 2089.67 and that would be in centimeters cubed as well okay final one then so this has been quite a long video i do appreciate that but we've got this final one and i just wanted to show you because sometimes they will give you a formula to use so a lot of them uh, or all of the ones we've looked at so far you'd be expected to know off the top of your head but some weird shapes like this it will give you uh, a formula. So what they've actually done here is they're giving us a formula for the hemisphere, so half of a ball, but we're still expected to know how to do the cylinder. So it says a craftsman uses resin to make a paperweight. 
He makes the uh, paperweight from two parts of a hemisphere and a cylinder, and he uses this plan. How much resin does he need for both parts? It's basically um, using the volume for each one, and then you're going to add them together. So with this one, if we work out the cylinder first, because we should know that one is nice and you know fairly easy, just give us a diameter. So we're going to have to halve that for our pi r squared h for the cylinder. So we've got 3.14, tells us to use 3.14, uh, times 3, times 3, and then times that by the 5 for the height. And that will give us the volume there of the cylinder. So 3.14 times 3 times 3 times 5 gives us a volume of 141.3 centimeters cubed. Uh, now for the top half, we've got to use this formula. So what you're going to want to do with this one, I mean, technically, if we're following bid mass, um, you wouldn't just put it all in one calculation like I did below. You would work out the R squared first as a separate calculation. But with this one, we are actually going to work out the R cubed first. We'll do it properly. Okay, so with the hemisphere, what I would do uh, to work this one out is do the R squared or R cubed for, uh, first, so R3. So um, if something is cubed, you're just multiplying it by itself and then multiplying it by itself again. So uh, you're doing it you know, R times R times R. So there's three R's there. I suppose that's relevant for the three there. And with if something is squared, R squared, it's just two. So two R's. Um, so that would be three times three times three, which is 27. So three threes are nine, three nines are 27. So we've got the value of R squared. What I would do then is times it by pi. So 3.14 times 27. Now strictly this way isn't in line with bid mass as such. Well, I'm kind of going off a little bit, but it gives you an, actually gives you a more accurate answer the way I'm doing it, rather than if you worked out the value of the fraction, because you'd end up rounding it. So this gives you a better better version. Anyway, um, 3.14 times 27 gives you 84.78. And that's your, that's your pi r cubed. 84.78. Now with the fraction, it's basically saying we need to find out what two thirds of that is. So if we divide that by three, 84.78 point seven eight divided by three equals twenty eight point two six and then we're going to just times that by two times that by two gives us fifty six point five two like so so all we've got left to do is just add those two together so the volume of the cylinder and the volume of the hemisphere Add those together so plus 141.3 gives us a total of 197.82 centimeters cubed but that's it for this lesson um certainly you can see some quite tricky questions at the end there but do let me know in the comments if you do have any further questions hopefully you found it useful and i'll see you on the next one